I'm not very calm, cool, and composed <laughs> right now, and you, you're feeling it as we're, we're all feeling the same thing. So the anger is is understandable. We I can relate to every last word of it. I'm looking at Twitter and looking at our texts and going, yep, I agree with that. Yep, I would say those words if I couldn't if I could not get fired. I would say that too. <laughs> but I, we got to keep it clean here. We got to keep it clean, which it, is hard to do. I guess I'm not as angry this time. Uh, this time I'm just disappointed because I feel like so here's one thing that you put Alvarez on and then Bregman comes in and gets an RBI. So, you know, that all of the speculation in the first one where you're angry, you have answers and this and that. I think now, I don't know if people are kind of settling into the fact that Houston is just really, really, really good. They are, unfortunately. Yeah. You hate to say it because they're so unlikable. Yeah, and you don't <laughs> want to say that. You don't want to give them any kind of a compliment at all. You know, Altuve with that, that throw he made. To get oh, Julio was so ridiculous. It really was. I, I, I desperately wanted to see the replay, you know, see his foot come off the bag a little bit. I'm just like, there's nothing there. Damn it. Yeah, <laughs> it was just a perfect execution of that. And then, you know, Alvarez just an absolute beast. And, you know, and then, you, like you said, you put Alvarez on and then Bregman comes in and he gets an RBI. It's just, ugh. ugh. Yeah, Terrible. it's, it's Brutal. you know, listen, they, he, he made, I'll say this, that, that Alvarez made him pay on a pitch that is surprising. Because it was a good four or five inches off the plate. That was not a meatball. That was not a Robbie Ray batting practice meatball across the heart of the plate. So that's, and you know how I hate this phrase, Dave, but that is a tip your cap (laughs) moment. That is one of those ones where you're just like, all right. You know, A, he's a big, powerful guy. B, he got that stupid Crawford box area out there that's like 200 feet away. So it doesn't take much to get it in that direction. I mean, a big pop fly is going to turn into a home run in that field. It wasn't a pop fly, but... It doesn't take much to go opposite field for a lefty there. And he reached out and got it. I mean, I'll, what do you do? It was a, it was not a bad pitch. You you want to argue whether you should have pitched to him at all? Okay, that's a different conversation. But in terms of the pitch, yeah, the Robbie Ray one sat there over the middle of the plate like a tantalizing little, little ornament there to be just shattered. This one, four, five, maybe six inches off the plate. It was a, it was a good pitch. He chased it. He is a guy who will chase. And I, I get not asking your ace to go out there and walk this guy. Castillo was rolling. He was pitching well. He pitched a good game. I mean, he had those two mistakes. And, and Tucker gets out in front of a changeup yeah. and is able to get it out of there. I mean, there are two mistake pitch. The first, I won't call that a mistake pitch to Alvarez. There was not. He just mm-hmm. he hit a good pitch. I'll give him credit. I, you have to. I hate it, but I will. And then the other one, you know, Tucker gets out in front on an off-speed pitch, and there you go. And then Munoz comes in and, and, you know, he gives up a run that makes it four to two. So it was, to me, more about the offense, kind of reverting back to what we had seen. You know, I was sort of celebrating these past two games and not celebrating the loss, certainly, of, of game one. But the fact that they were able to score seven runs, five of which you didn't hit a home run. There were two solo shots and they manufactured runs. I was like, this is this is what we've been asking for all season is just to manufacture runs. And they did it in the eighth inning on in in the second game in Toronto, and they did it in the first game, five runs each game. They started two in this one. You didn't have the benefit of a home run in this game. You manufactured two. Problem was, that's where it stopped. You stranded nine. And that's that's the frustrating part is it looked like the offense from various parts of the season. Yeah, just five hits. And, and you know, I, I thought – also, the two guys with RBIs, Santana and Demo, kind of the unsung heroes, you know, the, yeah. not not your front line players. Your X Factor. And, yeah, ex- exactly. France goes 0 for 4, which, you know, I just was like, come on, man, this is Ty France. I should feel better about this. And, yeah, and then the other time I screamed was the Tucker when, when he golfed that one out of there. I was like, no! Yeah. Oh, my God. I thought that thing was never going to come down. So, yeah, it just, and that guy bats, what, seventh? Who's that? Six. I'm. I'm trying. I can't. I can't remember where Tucker is in the lineup. Uh, I, guess I think he's, he's fifth. fifth. Yeah. We'll but I mean, one, two, and then it goes Gariel, yeah. and then Ledmus yeah. Diaz. Yeah, Ledmus and... Diaz is up there fouling ball after ball off. I mean, these guys yeah. are, you know, as as unlikable as the team is. They're they're uh, they're very good. They're very. That's a deep lineup. I mean, you don't you don't have. I mean, even Hensley comes in again and is is fouling pitches off there and making yeah. the pitcher work. So. You know, it just they are they are a very deep lineup. They've got a lot of ability. They they've got the pitching. They've got the hitting. They've got they've got it all. They've been in the ALCS what every year for the past five years. Mm-hmm. So it's it's uh, you know it's a tall task coming in, knowing you've got home field advantage against a team that won the second most uh, games in all of baseball behind the Dodgers. They won a, you know sixteen games more than you did. 
They scored a lot more runs than you did. They're just they're a very good team. So the this one, I'm with you. This it's disappointing because it's 0-2, certainly. This isn't one where I'm sitting there, you know, just wanting to punch something because of this. Why didn't you do this? Or why did this happen? You, the first one is the one that hurts. Right. You had it. That was your game. You blew it. This one, yeah, that's what good teams do, man. They take advantage of any little mistake you make, and they, they make you pay for it, and that's what the Astros did. Yeah, and when they went ahead 2-1 uh, in, in the top of the fourth, I was thinking, how am I going to feel about this afterwards? Am I going to think, hey, we came out of Houston and took one out of two, or I'm like, they should be two. They should have two wins, you <laughs> yeah. know, and now you, you got nothing. So, I mean, it's just – and I talked about this on Tuesday that Blowers was saying, you know, this team, I mean, they were they were down and they're just going to – they're going to give you professional at-bats, if you will, all the way through. They're never going to give up. Right. And, you know, just in thinking that you're safe at 2-1, I look back at myself and think I'm a fool. <laughs> Well, it, it, it got started early, and, and Tucker leans on one that's an off-speed pitch. He got out in front of it, and it was a, a moonshot out there. It, looked, it took forever to come down. but 6.6 .6 seconds, I think. Was yeah, it, it, was like a, it was like a punt. Oh, my God. It was like somebody out there waiting to field a punt, and it just, oh. ugh. The wind-up band, the pitch, swing, and a high fly ball deep to right field. Hanniger going back to the one eight track to the wall, looking up, and goodbye baseball. Kyle Tucker. With a home run to right field into the lower deck about four rows deep. And the Astros have an early one nothing lead here in the bottom of the second inning. Yeah, that was that was rough. But it's all right. You're going all right. It's one to nothing. And we've talked about this before when we had oh, you weren't there that day. We had Marco on and he was talking about Castillo and any time during the season where, you know, maybe something went wrong or he had a rough inning, he'd come back to the dugout and guys would be patting him on the shoulder. Hey man, we'll get him. And he's like, It's okay, Poppy. It's okay. <laughs> like he's just calm. He's just cool. The only time I see I saw him in this game, Dave, look a little bit annoyed was on that play of the ball that that landed between Julio and Adam Frazier. He looked Agreed. like he was staring somebody down. I don't know if it was Adam or if it was Julio, but he looked legitimately ticked. And I don't blame him. I don't I don't know what happened on that ball. I don't know if Frazier kind of looked like he was trying to call it, but he's trying to catch it over his shoulder. To me, I, and I, maybe Julio yelled. It's hard to tell, but in well, that setting. You're the you're the field general. You 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 are the traffic cop, if you will. So, it looked like Julio pulled up at the last second, and if he had been running just full steam ahead, he he would have had a chance to catch that ball. I don't know what happened there, but that obviously was the the little bloop from Pena right before the home run to Alvarez. So that would have been the third out of the inning. You come up with that ball, Alvarez doesn't come up until the next inning with nobody on. Yeah, and they focus in on Castillo's face, and I, I saw the same thing you did. I was like, maybe, you know, maybe not. You never know what he's thinking. He might just be like, oh, I missed that pitch or, you know, whatever. But it looked to me, and I looked at it a couple of times, I just think running backwards and trying to get a beat on that as opposed to in center field, you got a guy with really plus speed. Who's running in on a ball. He's, he's running in. Yeah. And there's nothing in front of him. He's not having to look over his shoulder. I mean, if yeah, I think it would have probably been, I don't want to say a spectacular play, but it would have been, you know, a diving play probably. I think he gets there. I, it felt like I, I watched it a couple times too, like where he pulled up versus where the ball landed. I don't even think he has to dive, to be honest, man. No? I think yeah, I, that that was my takeaway. Maybe somebody will disagree. And you guys, you can text in. I know, I know how you're feeling. So text in whatever you got, 866-979-3776, powered by Mac and Jack's Brewing Company. Yeah, that that play hurt. That that was. It seems inconsequential on some level. It's like it's a little bloop, a little flare. You go you go back, you get the next guy. Well, the next guy was Alvarez, and he hit that ball. That was a good pitch. You give him the credit, but should have been out of that inning. And I don't. I don't. I'll be curious to see if if a Frazier or Julio are asked about that play, and if did somebody call it? Did somebody? It look, on the replay. It looked like Frazier was yelling, but I'm thinking, why would he be calling it on a on a ball that's he's trying to catch over his shoulder. That's really hard to judge for anybody who's tried to catch a ball, a baseball over your shoulder. It's not like a football. It's it's very different. It's very hard to do. Um, and Julio seemed to have a beat on it. I don't know what happened there. If Julio didn't call it, then I would put it on him and say, man, you're you and the shortstop. You're the generals out there. Everybody else defers to you. And then in that situation, if you feel like you got a beat on it and you see, especially your second baseman trying to catch it over his shoulder, you got to scream him off. And he might have. I'm not saying he didn't, but it just – not knowing what was said there communication wise that that was that was a disappointing moment